So there is a book that this is in. And I noticed that there are um, a few libraries on Long Island that have it. Um, so that's that goes through the uh, interlibrary loan system. Yeah, what, want, what's the name of the book? It's called Trash Origami. Okay. And it's by Michael G. Lafas and Richard L. Alexander. Let's see if you can, there it is. Yeah, we can enter loan books and um, I can also see if it's still available in print. Um, yes, yeah, I think it is. I, I think it is. It's a great book and it comes, um, if you get it, like I looked online, it, there's a paperback version and then there's a hardcover version. So. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, I'll look into right. order it. Order it for our collection. All right, it's got a lot of good models in it in, in addition to this. And he's one of my favorite uh, authors that I recommend to people who are beginners. Actually, he, he folds very complex stuff also, but um, he's, he's very clear for, for beginners. Welcome everybody. If you're just coming in, we are going to get started probably just after 630. We have a lot of people signed up, so we just want to give them a chance to get in and a lot of people who are using Zoom for the first time. So we'll give, you know, a few minute courtesy. Um, Marianne is showing some of her work as we um, just wait for everyone to join and hopefully you've picked up your materials and you have them ready to go. Uh, are people uh, unmuted at this point? So um, the way people can communicate with you, Marianne, is through the chat box. Okay. So everyone um, is just watching you and hearing you. Okay. So, okay. If they have any specific questions, they can type it in the chat box. And if anyone had to show you something, we could promote them to a panelist so you could see them. But okay, unless that's... somebody indicates they need that assistance, they'll just be watching. All right, that's great because my my, um, my uh, keyboard is like beyond useless. It's a it it came with the computer. It's a new new wireless keyboard and half the time it just you type and it doesn't type <laughs> so it's like it's hard to chat in the chat you know to type in the chat box for yeah me. i could um, alert you to any questions if you do not see them <coughs> and then you could just answer them verbally okay that's great thank you
everyone. Welcome. I see some more people are coming in. So welcome to our program. We are going to get started in a few minutes. We are just giving everybody some time to get in, finish their dinner, relax, and get out your materials. So hopefully everyone had a chance to pick up their take and make kits with all the supplies that you'll need to for tonight's program. Um, thank you to our instructor, Marianne, who put all those kits together for everyone. She chose some great colors. So hopefully you are enjoying the brightness of those and um, she, um, her project tonight is just amazing. So we are all very excited for it. So again, we're just gonna give everybody a few minutes to come in. I still see people entering um, our Zoom room here. So um, go ahead and say hello if you want in the chat box. And you can also ask questions throughout the program. Um, so feel free to do that. Just remember to select all panelists and attendees if you want everyone to see your question. If you just have a specific question for Marianne or myself, then you can go ahead and just select all panelists and that will just come to us. And in the event you do need to um, turn your camera on, you get stuck on a fold or you wanna show your project after the program, we can promote you to a panelist and you will be able to um, speak to us rather than type in. So that is an option if anyone needs it. Okay, and what you should be doing now while you're waiting for the class to start is to look in your kit and get familiar with the, with the um, uh, materials that are in there. And you should find one piece that's all by itself that's like a very heavy weight paper or it's actually cardstock. Separate that from the other pieces of paper because that gets folded differently but everything else gets folded in very much the same way. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and you've taught three other people. See, that's, that's great. That's what I love to hear. That you've, you've learned something and you're passing it along. Um, this book will be something that you probably will want to pass along also. Because the folding is not difficult. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot going on online uh, in Zentangle also. So you can check out, there's quite a few um, used to YouTubes and there's a lot of Facebook pages that have really wonderful Zentangle communities. So Marianne, we do have people still coming in so um, I'm just gonna give everybody just one more minute. You know, we'll give everyone the five minute lead way okay. here. I know we, I spoke to uh, quite a few people today who just are doing Zoom for the okay. first time. They're on, so they're on um... we are happy to have them join and we will just give them a few minutes to All come right. in here, but we will get started in one minute. Um, and then I know you're starting with the little book you said, so at least people can catch up. Another thing that Marianne has um, been so uh, gracious about is she is going to allow us to record it 
and this video will be available to you for two weeks. So in the event that you just have to go back, rewatch something, just note that we will have a link that we can provide to you for two weeks where you can go back and rewatch this program. So that is an option as well. Great. So if anybody would like to, to get started with just the very first fold, you have a large piece of, of uh, you have a lot of large pieces of copy machine paper. Okay. And all those pieces, no matter what color they are, everything except the cardstock. Okay. So all those papers are all going to be folded long edges together. So you're going to fold it in half. Um, when we teach the kids, we call this the hot dog bun fold. So you're just going to fold all your long pieces in half, long edge to long edge. So you can start doing that now. Okay. You should have um, five pieces of white, four pieces of pastel, and two of the heavier paper card, uh, not cardstock, um, bright Astro Bright. Okay. So the four, the five, and the two all get folded long edge to long edge. Okay. One thing that you can do to do that is you can put the, so you, people don't always have a big enough space to work. So I'm just gonna clear off some of this stuff. One of the things that you can do is don't worry about the bottom. Just work on the top two corners place them together and give it a nice pinch, about one inch at least. Then go down to the other end. Line up those two corners, give it a nice pinch, and then you can put it down on your table and get those two pinches in the right spot. And see, I haven't folded this middle part yet. I'm just kind of patting it down, pat, 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 and so that it lines up with those two pinches. And then I can begin in the center and kind of pat it down a little bit more and a little bit more. Go back and check. You want corners lined up, the long edges lined up, and the edges lined up. Okay, and you're gonna do that with all your pieces, okay? Everything except the cardstock. Now I'm gonna to switch to some smaller paper so it's easier for you to see it on the on my screen. Okay. So that's the wonderful thing about this model. This model can be folded from any size rectangle. And that includes a square. The only stipulation is all the papers have to be exactly the same size. So this paper is half a sheet of, of the copy machine paper. So there's the sheet of copy machine paper and it's just half of that cut in half. Okay. And so that just gives a smaller book. Uh, the other thing, while you're folding all your papers in half, this is a wonderful, recycling paper, uh, project. So um, if you think way, 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 way back to last year when we were normal and the library had programs, they a lot of times had uh, printouts of what the classes were gonna be. 
my library uh, always did. And these are great. They are solid on the back. And so when you're folding your uh, book pages, you just fold this so that all the printing is on the inside and you won't see it. Uh, so if you have some of those, that's great. Um, another thing I found when I was looking through my paper stash today, just regular notebook paper with the blue lines on it. If you can see the blue lines, they're getting kind of washed out, but just regular loose leaf paper. Uh, when you fold that, it makes like a little notebook that with, with lines that you can write on. So that was good. Uh, you could use pages from a magazine and get some uh, fun pages like that. You could even use pages from a book, cut the pages out of a, an old book that nobody wants to, to read anymore, just as long as they're all the same size. The cover, the spine, the connectors, everything is the same size. Okay. Um, and for those of you who have your useless 2020 calendar, <laughs> really useless, um, this one is from 2018, but um, you can take a calendar and cut it up and use those pages, just as long as you make them all the same size. Okay. Um, other sources would be wrapping paper. Now, everybody should have in with their stash. Oh, here's the page that I folded with, with the notebook paper, put the lines on it. Uh, everybody should have in their stash a long piece of paper. It's hard to see. Let's see if you can. Yes, it should look like that. Okay. And that is going to be at the end, it's a little bonus, a belt that goes around the book to keep it shut. Okay. So if you, if you feel that paper, that is wrapping paper and it's fairly heavy weight wrapping paper. So anything like that's that weight or craft paper or even the, the brown paper shopping bags from the grocery store, those are a good weight. You can fold it so that the writing's on the inside. Some of the stores, like Trader Joe's, has really nice graphics on their bags. So, um, so you can use that paper for your books. Okay, so anything like that. But this is the last thing we'll be folding. So you can keep that to the side. Okay. So I'm going to begin, and since the pages are folded so similarly, um, anybody who comes in anywhere along the line can catch up. There's no problem. Okay. So you're going to take your pages, and um, there's, there's two kinds of there's four kinds of units to this book. There are pages. There are connectors that connect the pages together. Then there's a front and a back cover. The front and the back cover are folded exactly the same way the pages are folded. And then there's the spine on the back of the book. Okay, there's my obi, so I'll take the obi off or the belt. Okay, so here are my pages. I have yellow and, and red pages, and they are held together with connectors. And you can see in there the connectors are white. Your connectors will be white. So I have my pages, my connectors. I have a front cover and a back cover. And then I have a spine. Okay. 
front and back. So we're going to start by folding the connectors. So you have your uh, paper, your long edges are folded together. We call that a book fold or the hot dog bun fold with a rectangle. Okay. So you have your little your rectangle, you're going to open it up. And when you open it up, look at the crease. The crease goes down like a valley. If you look at it from the side, it's a letter V. So in origami, there's only two kinds of creases. There's the valley crease, which you get when you fold the paper and open it. But if I was to take my paper and turn it over, it doesn't sit flat on the desk. It comes up like a mountain. Okay, so now that's upside down. So we have a mountain fold, which is the opposite side of a valley fold. Okay, so it's very simple. You just have to keep track of your mountains and your valleys. So we've opened up the paper. We have a valley crease that is vertical. And now I'm going to fold the paper again. Now, if I was to find the halfway point along this long edge, so I'll do that, I'll just show it to you, okay? I found the halfway mark, I made a pinch. You can see there, there's the little pinch, okay? If I fold, the bottom edge to that pinch, don't do anything, just watch, I'm just demonstrating right now. Okay, if I fold right up to that pinch mark, that was half the paper, I fold it in in half, and this, this flap is one quarter of the paper. And if I fold the top edge to meet it, that is also one quarter of the paper. So I have one quarter plus one quarter equals one half. If this side of the paper is one half, the, what's on the other side must be the other half. Okay, so we folded the paper and we've gotten half. Now, if I took the, the, uh, the paper and I folded it up, but I didn't go right to the pinch mark. I folded it. And I brought the opposite edge to meet it. I would not know how, what percentage of the paper is this flap and what percentage of the paper is this flap. But the other side is still half. So that's exactly what we want. We want to find half. So, um, now I used up my piece of paper. Let me get another one. Okay, fold it in half. This is why I had you fold all the pieces in half right away. Okay, so now, I have an area here that we're going to call this the halfway zone. Okay, if I fold my bottom edge up to anywhere within what seems to me to be the halfway zone, that's all you need. You don't have to measure it exactly, it does not have to be half exactly. So you're going to take the short edge, the short bottom edge, and fold it up approximately halfway, make a crease, rotate your paper 180 degrees, and repeat. You're taking the bottom edge up to that edge that's already there, 
and you want those two edges, you can actually feel them when they butt together, when they just touch each other. No overlapping, no gap. They have to touch each other all the way across exactly half, uh, exactly uh, touching. And the other thing you wanna make sure is that your edges along here are completely straight. If you don't fold it up evenly, you'll get a little edge hanging, hanging off there, okay? So everything has to be completely straight on both ends. We need 90 degree angles, okay? So I'm folding a connector. Now, the center crease, I want that to be a valley. So I'm going to close it si side to side, just like I was closing a book, bring it together, okay? This is a connector. So if you have a pencil or if you have some post-it notes, you can put a little C and it doesn't matter where you put the C on your connector because none of that is gonna show. The entire connector except for the very, very edge is not gonna show. So I want you to fold all your white pages, which are connectors, just like we did, okay? Fold them in half the long way, open, fold up to the halfway zone, and then fold the opposite flap to meet. And fold it. So this is a connector. This is a connector. So the number of connectors is always the same as the number of pages plus one. So when I say page, this is a page. It has a front side and a back side. So if this was a book, this would be page one and page two. But I'm calling it one page. Okay. So you're going to have four pages and five connectors. So you're folding your connectors now. You're folding your white paper. And... I'm gonna give you a few minutes and you can um, just in the chat, just give me a thumbs up or, a, or an okay when you have your five connector units folded. Five white connectors. So everybody has all their connectors, everybody has white. I don't see any any uh, any action in the chat there, so I assume that you're all folding.
These are the little tiny uh, post-it notes that you can use also if you don't want to write on your on your pages. Oh, great. Very good. Okay. I see lots of people are done. So um, we, have, we have enough time, so don't feel rushed. But if you're not done folding your pages, I mean your connectors, excuse me, your connectors, you can finish those up um, a little bit later. But now we're going to move on to the pages. So the pages are folded. They start out the same way. Everything starts out the same way with that valley crease that's running vertically. I'm just gonna switch to a different view here. Great, okay, I see folded, folded, great. Okay, so now the page. The page starts out the same way. It has the vertical crease. We're going to fold the bottom up to the halfway zone. Okay. And I should have mentioned in the beginning, this book was designed by a woman in, in uh, Connecticut. Her name, uh, she's a mathematician. Her name is Rona Gerkowitz. And um, Rona, has quite a few origami books under her belt, uh, but mostly she folds polyhedra and uh, very mathematical kinds of origami. So she doesn't have this uh, model in a book, but there's a gentleman whose name is Michael LaFosse, who is another origami author, and he has published a book called Trash origami and um, this model is in that book. They fold it just slightly different than I do. The, the thing about this model is that the pages and the connectors have to be slightly different sizes the page always needs to be a little bit larger than the connector. So if the, uh, we folded the, the uh, connectors, now we're going to fold the page. The page has to be larger than the connector. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take the edge and we're gonna to come towards the other edge, but instead of them touching each other, we're going to leave a little gap. Now, think little, okay? Um, I brought a book of matches, so you could make it as wide as one of the matches. Uh, I also brought a wooden matchstick, and I, that would fit very nicely in that little gap. But after you fold a few of these, you're going to be able to eyeball it so that they are approximately the same size. So the pages are going to be a little bit larger because we're leaving that little gap in between, okay? So we're not quite folding it in half. It's gonna be just a little bit larger than half. This is a page. So you're folding the pages from your pastel color. If you, you should have five connectors, you should have four pages, okay? You always have one more connector than pages, All right? So you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take it and you're gonna close it like it's a book, okay? So you're gonna fold all four of those 
let me know when you have folded uh, your four, okay? So you want, you're folding four now that have that slight gap between them, okay? About the size of a wooden matchstick or a regular match. And you want them all to be uh, about the same size. The reason they have to be bigger is because the connector goes inside the page. And so the page is wrapping around the connector and it has to be able to slide. I like when I, especially in, when I'm starting out, I like to uh, label my connectors and my pages. So I'm making two pages. So I have three connectors and they're folded in half and I've written a P. So I know I have two pages and I have three connectors. Come on, camera, focus in. There we go. Okay, I see done with pages, one person, okay. So you're going to keep all your connectors together and all your pages together. Okay. The other thing that you could have handy, um, this is something that I use all the time. This is called a bone folder. Um, this one is actually made out of wood. It's hand, it's hand carved out of teak. Um, and it's a tool that helps me to make nice sharp creases. So you can use those, especially when we get to the card stock, to make your creases really nice and sharp. Okay. But if you don't have a bone folder, you could use just a regular old kitchen spoon. And the way that I use this is I put my thumb in the bowl of the spoon. And then I can go down on the paper and get a nice sharp crease without putting any marks on the paper. Um, but if where you're folding, you don't have, uh, I'm just looking at the, at the chat here. If you, if you don't have a folding bone, you don't have a spoon, you could always use a, uh, a marker. It should be rounded, okay? You don't want any sharp edges, okay? And you can use that to get your creases nice and flat. Okay. So you can use uh, a tool to help you. It's not quite as critical on the paper, but when we get to the card stock, um, it'll be helpful. Okay. Okay, so you have your pages in one pile and your connectors in another pile. Now we're going to work on the front 
and back covers. So you should have two pieces of brightly colored uh, paper. And you should be able to feel the difference in the thickness or the weight of this paper compared to say the white paper or the pastel paper. So the white and the pastel papers are called 20 pound paper. And that means that X number of pieces of, of the paper, and I don't know how many that is, but a bunch of the pieces of paper weigh 20 pounds. The same number of this heavier paper weighs 24 or sometimes it's 26 pounds. It's sold under a variety of names. Astro Bright is one brand name. Um, the big stores like Staples and Office Max have their own brands but it's, it's always the bright colors. And you can look at this on the side of the package and it should say 24 or 26 pound. And I like that uh, for the covers, it gives you a little, a little uh, bit stronger cover. You could also use something like this. This is scrapbooking paper. And this happened to come in a package that was eight and, a half, uh, eight and a half by 11. So it was the same size as, as your regular copy machine paper. So that was, that was a good deal. But again, you could use heavyweight wrapping paper or you could use a magazine cover and anything that has a little bit, little bit more oomph to it. And again, these begin exactly the same way, long edges are folded together. Okay. Open it up. The covers, the front and the back covers are a specialized form of a page. So they're gonna get folded like a page. So we're going to bring the bottom edge up to the halfway zone, somewhere around halfway. And because it's a page, we're going to leave a gap. Okay. And I'm gonna fold the other one at the same time, so. So you can see it again, fold it up approximately halfway, fold it over and leave my little gap. You don't want the gap to be too big because um, then, the, then it will just be too loose and it will flop around and it will slide off too easily. Okay, so, so far these are folded like pages but now we're going to make a uh, one fold different. So we're going to open it up and we're going to take one of those long edges and we're going to, uh, I put it down at the bottom and I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna fold over a small hem. This hem, you can vary the size, okay? If you want it smaller, if you want it larger, okay? But just start out with, oh, about a, somewhere between a half inch and three quarters of an inch. And you're going to do that with both. Now, this is where your little post-it notes come in handy because this is plain paper. So there's absolutely no issue. But if you were working on paper that had a pattern, if that pattern was directional, you have to be very careful how you, how you fold it so that when you put your front cover on, your pattern isn't upside down. Especially if you have like something like hearts, you know, you don't want them to be upside down. Okay, so um, that's where I would, uh, 
use my uh, post-it notes. So now we put, we put in that little hem, we're gonna close the flaps again, and you have to reinforce it in that area where the hem is. You have to go over that again. And again, we're going to fold it. So we have that valley crease, okay. And the short side, we have a long side and a short side. The long side is always going to be in the book. And the thing that's hanging out on the, on the end will be this short side, okay? So this would be the front cover. And again, fold the flaps in, fold it in half, and that's gonna be the back cover, okay? If you want to uh, put a post-it note on it, you can. So this way you make sure you get everything exactly where you want it. So we have the connectors, we have the pages, we have the two covers. The last thing will be the spine. The spine gets folded slightly differently right off the bat, okay? Instead of one, central crease the long way, we're going to have two creases the long way, okay? So the way you do that is you take your long bottom end, you're going to fold it up towards the top and you're going to lay it down at the, the width that you want your spine to be. So let me show you one of the folded books. Here's my book. There's the, the end of the spine and there it is. It's about uh, half to half inch, maybe a little less than three quarters of an inch. Okay. You want it to be able to go around all of your, all of your pages and connectors, okay? So you fold one edge up and leave that distance, okay? Now, leaving it flat on the table, you're gonna open the flap out, rotate the whole thing 180 degrees so you don't get confused. And you're going to take the other long edge and do the exact same thing. Fold it up the amount that you want the width of your spine to be. Make that crease. Then when you open it up and you look at it the long way, I'm trying to get it so you can see it. There it is. You can see you have now two vertical creases. Okay. The spine is a specialized connector. So it gets folded just like a connector. So you're going to fold the bottom up. Now I know you have cardstock. I'm using just regular, um, regular paper. But um, so it's a little bit harder to fold. So take your time, get your, get your bottom folded up, use your tool, folding tool, whether it be a folder or uh, just the side of a, a marker or a pen, okay? And because it's a connector, the two edges are gonna butt up right against each other. And 
we want to reestablish those two center creases. There they are, the two central creases. We want to reestablish those as valley creases. So you're just going to put it back in right along the crease that's already there. Just refold it like so, okay? The flaps are on the inside, always on the inside. So there is the spine, okay? That piece is gonna go on last. So now we're at the point to do our assembly. To begin the assembly, you want to take a page, okay? Take your page, which is your pastel color, lay it down flat so that the center crease is a valley crease, okay? And you have a bottom flap and a top flap. So you're going to open up the top flap and you need two connectors, okay? The connectors are always mountain creases. So they're gonna sit on the table like little pup tents, okay? Valley, uh, uh, mountain creases, okay? Half of this connector is going to slip into this pocket. Get these out of the way. Okay. It's gonna slip into the pocket on this side and this connector is going to slip into the pocket on this side of the central crease. Okay, I have that central crease from the page. Close the flap down over it. And now I'm going to put in the, the creases. This is a mountain crease. The center is a valley crease and the outside is a mountain crease. Okay, so when you look at it from the side, it's the letter M. Your connectors are always mountain creases and your pages are always valley creases. Okay, so now we're gonna treat this as one connector. I need a new page. I open up my page, open up the top flap. This flap from the connector, which is a mountain crease, goes on the right side in the pocket. And my next connector goes on the left side in the pocket. I close the top flap down and mountain, valley, mountain, everything closes. So you are making an accordion fold or a fan fold. And I want you to continue. You have four pages. So you're going to continue to add on. This always closes up and you treat it as though it's just a connector. Add in your next page. Put on one side, on the other side, and close it up. So let me know when you have connected all of your connectors and your pages. Yes, this is the, I'm sorry, I just saw this, Judy. Yes, this is the card stock that you're folding. Okay, I see Lily is done. Aga is done.
Marigold, 13 is, uh, oh, show us again. Okay. So I have mountain, valley, mountain. I have connector and a page and a connector. Okay. So I'm going to open up my page of uh, the top flap. Down at the bottom, I have, I have a pocket. So my connector goes on top of that. It fits in perfectly. One connector on that side, one connector on the other side. I made a made a wrong fold in there. So okay, there you go. Connector on e, uh, on each side. My flaps are folded. This is a mountain. A valley in the middle. The yellow, and the green is a mountain. When you look at it from the side, it's an M. So this becomes my new connector for the on the right side I take my page lift up the top flap slip this into the pocket line everything up you have creases there to follow okay so get it lined up nice and evenly you're going to put a connector on each side of a page Close up the top flap. Here, mountain. Here in the center is a valley and a mountain. So when you look at it from the side, there. Okay, okay Kim is done. Okay, Marigold, is that fine? Great, very good. Oh, Margo, I'm sorry. <gasps> Okay, so now I'm going to move on to adding the front and the back covers. The front and the back covers are just like a page. So I'm taking my, uh, my book that I already have assembled. I'm going to hold it so that I have a um, a connector hanging out. And this is going to be the front of my book. So I, I find the one that says front cover. Okay. Now I'm going to put the connector into the full sized side of the cover. Okay. So the full size is on the right and the short at one with the finished edge is on the left. I'm gonna add it just like I would add a page. Lift up the top flap, put the connector inside, close it up, and there's the front cover. Okay, and you'll see that actually upside down so that's the front cover
Okay, then we're gonna put on the back cover. So we want this to be a mountain crease. Here is my um, back cover. I open up, slip the mountain crease into the left side of the back cover, into the pocket. Close it up. Okay. So there I have my front cover and my back cover. All that we need to do now, this is the this is the um, the covers of the book. These are the pages. So I folded two sheets, so I have, I, it's, I call it four pages. Page one, page two, page three, page four, okay? Even though this, even though it's two pieces. So you folded four pieces, you'll end up with eight pages. And the last thing to do now is to put on the the um, spine. So you're going to turn it around to the back, which is where we've actually been working to begin with. And what you want to do is you don't want to put one side in all the way and then put the other side in. You want to put the one, the first side in just a little bit. So here I am at the back cover and that's a pocket. So I'm going to slip one side of the spine into the pocket, but I'm not gonna push it in. I'm gonna leave it in just so that the edges just are going in. And then I turn it over so I can work on the other side. See, I have all that space left over, okay? Now I open up this pocket a little bit and you kind of have to work with it, round it a little bit so that you tuck each side in and the other side might come out while you're doing it but then so you see you've got all that going on there then you can just tap it gently tap it tap it tap it until it goes in all the way and there you are there's your front cover that is cool right so you see, I actually did have some things end up upside down. So that's why I like having the, um, the post-it notes so that you know, this was my sample from that I made before. Top front, well, page two, it ended up, <laughs> it ended up backwards. So that's why it's good to, to have your little uh, post-it notes because I, I made the whole thing backwards. Now, it doesn't really matter when your pages are blank, but if you have, this is the front, this is the back. Okay. So if you, if you could actually pre-print your material on the uh, computer and make a little book out of it, you could make a coloring book, you could make a diary. Uh, if you're going on a trip, you could uh, write your itinerary in there, things that you did. Um, so this is very nice, but there's so much more that you can do with this book. Let me take, just take a look at the, at the chat here to make sure I'm not missing anything. Woohoo, I have a book to tangle in. That's great. Uh, can you go over the, how to fold the cover again? Okay. All right, so let me, um, let me pull this off. So the cover is just like a page. All right. So you have your 
central crease Oh, if you're making manga, the back is the front. Okay. Um, so you have your central crease. You fold up to the halfway zone. You fold down and leave a gap. Okay. The cover is a page. So you need to have your gap. Then open it up and Take one edge and fold over a small hem. Okay, the reason that you're doing that is this is much, there, this part here is much nicer if it's a finished or a folded edge. If it's a, a raw edge or an unfinished edge, it, it doesn't look that nice. It's not as sharp, it's not as strong, and it just looks unfinished. So you can vary the width of this area by how wide you fold your strip, okay? You wouldn't wanna fold it more than, more than halfway, okay? Um, and the other thing that you could do, and I could show you on this one, is you could fold it not straight, you could fold it at an angle. Okay, then you're gonna close your flaps. You're gonna close your flaps. You still have your center crease. And it goes on. So here's a connector. The connector always goes into the full size side. So you open up the top flap, slip it in, close the flap, and you're ready. Oh, I gotta put the back on also. Same thing with the back. Open up the top flap. It's a mountain crease. Slide it into the cover. Close the flap. So now when I put the spine on, It's at an angle. All right, so I had another one that I folded like that. Oh, so if you, if you fold everything, if you start instead of folding the long edges together, if you fold the short edges together, now your book is going to be in the landscape mode instead of the portrait mode. So this is the one that you just folded. I got no room over here. Okay. This is the one you just folded. This is the same, it's the same size, But instead of folding the long edges together to begin, I folded the short edges together to begin. Okay, let me take a look at the chat. Okay, everybody seems happy. Um, so now there's even more things that you can do. I'm just going to take a quick look over here. Okay, we have plenty of time. Uh, zoom, okay. Sorry about that. I just have too much technology here to deal with.
Okay, there we go. Um, so now I made this other little book and I did some experimenting with the pages. So I thought, well, what if I wanted a pocket in my page? So here is my book. Here's my book. And I have this nice flat page here because when I, when I attached it, I had my flaps on the inside. Here's my valley crease, here's my flaps. But if I folded this the opposite way, there's my valley crease. Now my flaps are showing so I could make a pocket. So what I did was I just took the bottom flap, opened it up and folded a small hem. And that gave me a pocket. And I could do the same thing with the top hem if I wanted. Open it up, just fold it down a little bit. So now I have an opening. Now, the only thing that I didn't like over here was that this was a raw edge and this was a raw edge, but um, you could fix that. So here I made a pocket. I even took the corner and I folded it under. So it gave it an interesting shape. And then you could put something in there. This is my little Starbucks Easter bunny. Um, well, here's, here's the other version with the flaps on the outside. So what I did here was I took a scissor and I cut up about an inch and down about an inch and I folded those flaps. First, I folded them up. Oh, what happened? Lost my picture. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, I think it said low battery. So I, I did have it fully charged, but I don't, I don't know. I could plug in a, uh, my charger. And then I just took them and I folded them inside. And that gave me a little opening, a little frame that I could put a picture in. But I didn't wanna see my connector. So I just tucked in an extra little piece of paper. So I could print something on that paper and then stick it in. Um, you know, if I was traveling and I had some receipt or some admission coupon or whatever, and I wanted it to show, you could do that. So there's, there's that. Here's another, another pocket and a small flap up here. So you can, you can play around with this and do all kinds of experimenting. Again, um, here's the one with the, this is in the, in the landscape view. And what I did here was I took my little paper punch and before I had it attached, I punched through the layers and then I put a piece of yellow paper behind it to keep it to, from showing through to the connectors. I folded the, the uh, page at an angle instead of keeping it straight. And here I used a postcard for my spine. So it was nice and strong. It had you know, some pretty artwork on it. And then, the punches that I punched out from the front, 
I took a little glue and I glued them on the back. Right. Um, then Oh, we want to do the OB also. So we'll do that next. Um, here's one where I put the OB on and I had a piece of jewelry. So I just uh, just pinned pinned that on temporarily. So I thought that made it nice. And on the inside, I did some rubber stamping. Put a, put a postage stamp in there. Um, then here's one that I embellished with origami. So I made the back grass and I made the edge in stone paper, a stone motif. And the front is a water. So I made it into a koi pond. I rubber stamped the fish with a metallic um, orange, and then I embellished it with origami lily pads and lilies. And here's another one that I, oops, sorry about that. Here's another one that I embellished with some origami. I don't think I put anything on the inside of these. So you can, there's so much you can do with these. All right, the OB. So now we want to take that long strip of paper that you had. Now, normally I would tell you to fold it in half, but I had to fold it in half already because it was like, it was so uncontrollable. The, the paper was all curled up. So I folded it in half and that took, that took care of that. Um, so you fold it in half and open it up to the white side, which is a valley crease down the center. Okay. And you're going to take one long edge and fold it so it's just below that crease. Don't go right up to the crease because things get a little bit thick and you want to leave a little bit room for the thickness of the paper. So you folded it up. Now you're going to use that central crease that was there already and just roll it over itself. And you should have that strip of white showing at the top. You're just going to bring that over the edge. Okay, so it's really just rolled over. Um, and the reason that you do that is because the last crease um, is a little bit wider than the first crease. If you wanted to measure it, you could see that you've left yourself a sort of a good size gap, but on one side of the line, on, on one side of the center crease. Okay, so you've got, you've got, um, the first side is, is, stays closed, open it, this up, and now you're going to fold the raw edge just like we did on the cover. You're going to fold up a small hem. You could fold it up to the, to the crease or a little below the crease, but you're just folding a little bit over just to finish off that raw edge. Okay. All right, now you can open it all up and on one end, you also wanna fold over a small hem. This is again, just to finish the edge. Okay, that little narrow crease is down here on the bottom. So we're gonna start up at the top and we're gonna roll Put in the first crease, put in the second crease, we're rolling it over. 
put in that little bottom crease and finally bring that up over. So it's finished on this edge and it's finished all along here. This is the inside of the belt, this, this little uh, pocket. Okay, so now you need your book. I'm going to take the front of the book down. I'm going to take the finished edge and bring it around the back. Okay, so over the spine and, and tight around the spine. Now this edge that's left is going to come over and it's going to go inside this piece. Okay, now that's harder to do than it looks because it's the same size on this side that it is over here. And it's kind of hard to get something uh, that's the same size one inside the other. So you're going to take just the, the tip and fold over a small bit of it, a small triangle, okay? Doesn't matter what it looks like because it's gonna go inside. Okay, now I'm gonna lift this up so that you can see. There's, it's all rolled up like a jelly roll. So on this top edge, that's where you want your, uh, your tab to go, to go in. So in there, not underneath. See, there's an extra layer in there. So we don't want it to go under that layer. We want it to go over that layer. It helps a little bit if you see how I'm pushing it, that opens it up. And you're gonna take this and just push it over and just kind of wiggle it a little bit so that it goes in there. And that's your little obi or belt to keep your book closed. And it slides on and off. Okay, okay let's see what we have. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, this is great. And it's beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Uh, any questions? Will there be written instructions? I tell you what, I made notes for myself and I will send them to Amber. How's that? Oh, good, Susan, yes. Uh, these are so much fun to make. They make wonderful presents. People love getting them and you can personalize them. Okay, yeah, I'll, se I'll send my notes to Amber as soon as, as, soon as we uh, close off here. Yeah, and just a reminder that you can rewatch this program um up to two weeks so we could we have a recording so um just email me for the link if you want the direct link and you can also go to mcpl.tv and you can find this under craft with us so uh you can definitely rewatch, and then um email oh, me it's great too. yeah yeah this is a this is a good uh, mother daughter <clears throat> mother daughter activity so that's that's nice <clears throat> and also again remember that the um there is a book called uh, trash origami that has the instructions in now let me just tell you a little bit about the difference between the way i do it and the way they do it the connectors and the pages have to be different sizes 
So the way that um, Rona, who is the uh, person who invented this model, the way, th the way that she did it was she made the pages like the connectors where the edges meet. But then the connectors have to be smaller than the pages. So what she did was instead of having a gap, she made the two edges overlap and that made the page smaller. I don't like that way because you can't, you really can't see what you're doing. It's a little bit, it's a little bit harder to, to see what you're doing. So I like the way that I did it better. Um, but the idea is exactly the same, that the page has to be larger than the connector. Okay. And in my written, uh, in my written directions, uh, I think I make that pretty clear. So I'll send those to Amber. Okay. Let me take a look there. Notes would be good. Okay, yeah. I have a lot of technology here, but I don't have a clock. So I think... Yeah, we're, we're right on time. Okay. So I thank you all so much for coming to the, uh, to the meeting. And I hope to see you again in another class. You're very welcome. Great. We'll stick around just uh, for a minute or two to see if anyone else has any questions. Sure. Yeah. And I, they uh, are uh, just a little bit addictive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, you can get you can get really nice paper, um, like at at the um, craft stores, eight and a half by eleven inch scrapbooking paper. Um, in all different kinds of patterns. So you can really personalize the covers. And then, then you want to match the pages to, to, you know, to the colors in your cover. And it just, it, it, it's fun. Uh, Mary, just go ahead and um, reply to my email that I sent out for the reminder and let me know you want the direct link. But all our programs that we've offered, they're, they go on our YouTube page, which is uh, mcpl.tv. But if you want to get the direct link, just email me and I will send it out to you tomorrow morning. I just have to edit the video as soon as I okay, get it. Okay, and Kim, I just want you to know that um, what you need for materials, you need the number of pages, the number of connectors is always the same as the number of pages plus one. So if you're making a hundred pages, you need a hundred and one connectors. Okay, so it's always whatever the number of pages plus one. Two for the cover, one for the spine and everything is the same size. Okay. Right. Well, okay. we yeah, made it. Doesn't it. Look like there's any more questions. So if everyone has my email, so again, just email me with any um, questions you have after the fact, or if you need any written notes or the link. So I'm available to you whenever you need. And I just want to thank Marianne again for such a great program. And I hope everybody has a great night. Thank you and good night.